Hi, friends. This is an episode I'm calling a recipe for getting your mojo back. It's basically to get your motivation, your energy tuned if you've been in a slump. And I think this is for anyone who feels like they are in a 2023 hangover or it doesn't have to be, you know, for right now, the new year. It could be any time that you're listening to this, but I think it's just like that energetic feeling of like, you just got washed up on the shores of your life and you don't feel mentally or emotionally shiny yet. So this is really about how you tune and get back into that feeling of optimism, hope, excitement, knowing your own value and, in, and being able to embody it. Um, this is mostly tools because that would be what I would want if I were in this situation. I also think it's really nice to just hear that it's happening to a lot of people and that you're not alone. You know, I think a lot of people are looking for work right now. A lot of people are experiencing the effects of the pandemic, but also the strikes. I mean, so many factors. And I think a lot of people on the opposite side of that are just overwhelmed, inundated with emails, not, they don't have bandwidth. So if you are a person who is currently reaching out to people, you're not getting responses, you feel invisible, don't take it personally because it's not. And just really right now, what we have to do is focus on an invisible point that is beyond the top of the mountain. So it's like, I want you energetically to picture yourself heading to a point that is much better, that is very far out of your sight range currently, but it exists. Um, outside of that, uh, you know, take what helps, leave the rest. I have a slightly controversial tool in here that I think I want you to just take it for whatever it inspires, but also don't don't be offended by it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this episode is like an energy shift and it's a way to change your relationship to life and all that's in it. And I think this is how we can start to see the same room we've been in anew. I know I've mentioned this saying before, but it's like when the student is ready, the teacher arrives that I think it's a Buddhist saying it's that to me is so powerful because it's it's this weird moment where it's like all the conditions could be exactly the same. Everything in your life is exactly the same, but all of a sudden you're hearing everything differently. It's so powerful and weird. I remember this moment in my own life when I was just in such a bad place. I was trying everything I could just to get by and just to like not be in pain all the time. And I remember I was like, it didn't feel like anything was taking any effect. I was just going through the motions of trying to like be in pain and live. And then at this weird moment, it felt like everything was talking to me. Like all the universe was just, everything felt like it was exactly relating to me. That moment exists. And know that when you are trying really hard and you're just going through the motions of doing all that you can things will start to line up and resonate in a new way when nothing has changed in a significant, you know, external factors kind of way, everything will just start to align. And you might have been feeling tractionless before, and then things just start to like, feel like, all right, I think I'm on the right path now. Like bells start ringing, things start to resonate, coincidences start to happen, doors and windows open. I think that happens mostly because of our energy and our commitment to going through the right motions. So this episode is really how do we get the ball rolling on all of that energy shifting, especially if you are in a rut and you've been in a rut or you feel like less than your best self. In that situation, what we do is we work with the full awareness of the fact that we are in a rut and so as a first step, I wanted us to all pick a metaphor for externalizing the film or whatever it is that is on your energetic being. So if no metaphor is coming to mind, I want to offer you one, like a, I like to visualize it like it's a cloak, it's kind of a heavy cloak. And maybe it's one that we can think of as allowing us to rest and reset 
So maybe it's black velvet. It's bedazzled with gems, whatever it is for you. The goal is to see this feeling as an external thing. And what we can do is we can take it off and we can hold it up and we can look at it. And we can see this thing as <clears throat> malleable. It is material we are working with. It's almost like another character in the stage play that is our life. It's something for us to react to, talk to, uh, process and see how we want to respond to it. So now that we have externalized it, let's say if it's the cloak you're holding out in front of you, I want you to ask, what is this bringing into my life? Is it a, a creative fruit gathering stage that I'm in? Like, what's the positive that this has brought to me? And what am I ready to reassess from this state? Like, is there something in my life that I've, I have to rethink that this is allowing me to rethink? Is this here for a reset of values? Like, what's the benefit? And if none of the things I'm throwing out are resonating, I want you to craft a potential value that just feels loosely true for you, but it has to be a positive one. And just allow that to be true. Like, just allow for it temporarily in your energy to be something that you put stock in. Like, yep, yeah, maybe this is a positive for whatever random fill in the blank loosely true definition is for you. And now I want us to all visualize we are putting this aside, we're folding it and we are putting it away. The cloak is going off. So I think of this as something similar to like a mini hibernation stage. And now we all are all emerging from this cave and the light is bright. It's new. We're in a moment of seasonal change. And so with that, I'm going to be giving you some tools for resetting our perspective and starting to generate this feeling of efficacy. And what that comes down to is really just remembering ourselves from another time and another state of mind and really looking at that invisible point that we can't see from here, but it's up there. It's beyond the top of the mountain that we can see in the distance. That's where we're aiming ourselves. And that point is so a lot, it allows us to aim higher than what we think is possible. That's the goal is energetically to aim higher than what we think is possible. So with that, I have tools for you in this area for getting that shine on. Before I go into the tools though, first a brief word from our sponsors. All right, first and somewhat no duh, of a tool, but I think it's incredibly important as a first step, see your impact and see your ability to create change in your life. So my very first tool is reset your space. And what does that mean? I mean, clean your actual space, do laundry, put stuff away, clean the surfaces. Also things that are inconsequential and like don't feel important things like do your nails, Maybe that means you're getting a haircut. Maybe that means you're washing your car. Maybe that means you're cleaning out the fridge, your toiletry drawer, whatever it is. That step is a way to feel in control, calm, ready, and mentally clear. I think it's so essential. So I'm going to assume you are all going to do that. <laughs> Beyond cleaning your space, I think one way we can start to, to ready ourselves for change is to see ourselves being effective in all spheres, watching our impact take effect. So making things better, wielding power in any direction, things changing all at once allow us to see ourselves as powerful tools. So I talked about cleaning already, but like what else can you change in your life that allows your, your impact to expand? And I mean like literal physical external things. So making someone in your life happier, making uh, your calendar filled with things that are potentially positive for you. I mean, things like lunches with people who have clout in the world, having phone calls with people who are connected to other people, uh, people who are 
in need of your help in your life, making their lives better, anything that allows you to connect to other people, putting more irons in the fire, even if you can cannot see them coming to fruition, just having things that we are working on that are connected to other people, I think grows our own feeling of scale. Outside of that, next tool, super important. This is, I think, like I would say the most important tool in the, in the entire episode. I'm calling it working while sick or driving on the other side of the road. I really want you to embrace this idea of we are working while we are sick. And that is just something sometimes we have to do. And I think if that metaphor doesn't resonate with you, another way to think about it is we have to get used to driving on the other side of the road in how we move through life and take actions. Like when we feel unimportant, we feel unwanted, we, we feel like losers, we don't feel shiny, that is fine. That's part of what it means to be a human being. It will happen for long stretches of your life. And we really have to accept that feeling as something that is normal and go through the motions of all the same proactive things we know we need to do while feeling this way. And it's almost like, you know, when you're sick and you're like, now I have to do things like shower and dress myself and go through the motions of feeding myself. It's like, it doesn't feel like it's positive or something we want to do. It's not fun, but your body knows what it has to do. You know exactly the motions you have to take. So in this stage of your life, a feeling like this is not working. I'm not doing anything effective. People are not interested in me. I am going nowhere. You have, really have to just embrace that that feeling is okay and do all of the same things that you know are effective, positive, proactive, positive in any direction. And know that sometimes that is how it feels when we are being effective. Like that feeling of like, I'm a fucking loser is what it feels like sometimes to be a very powerful, productive person. And we have to work. We have to learn to work despite it. It's almost like when you're, you know, training in like a fitness area and you feel really uncomfortable because of how hard your muscles are working or your muscles are shaking. That's just part of it. And you have to continue pushing yourself and like knowing that that's just a stage that you're going to move through. You are being effective. And on the outside, you do look shiny, even though you yourself cannot see that. Which brings me to a very related tool, which is a mantra. I have no idea how great I look. And, or the second version of this mantra is, I look forward to the day when I can see how wrong I was. I know this sounds weird, but I have such an innate logic of my own brain to the point where when this occurs in my life, I literally say to myself, like, I look forward to the day when I can see the truth of myself, like in a positive way, because there's, whenever I start to feel like low, unwanted, stupid, like a hack, unqualified, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I know that there's a moment later on past that where I'm going to see the inverse and be able to see clearly like, oh no, that wasn't true at all. That was like the feeling you're in in that moment. So if you are feeling low and uncool, I welcome you to utter the same intention in your own words or in my words. I look forward to seeing the truth of myself in the future because that moment will happen. It'll it, just wait for it. Like you'll, if you feel like I'm a fucking loser, nobody likes me, give it like a day, you will see the opposite be proven to you. It's magical. It's, it's, it happens every single time. Another mantra, next tool, show me how this is for the best. Um, I think intentions like this are really just reminders to our energy to stay neutral and whether or not, if you are taking actions that are positive, if you are being proactive and doing all the things you think you possibly can to help yourself in your situation, everything is aligning, whether you realize it or not. So how can you help yourself to remember that? And how can you remain open and receptive to that truth coming forth? And I think one thing that helps in just reminding ourselves to be neutral is expecting that this is all 
for a good reason. There's something that is aligning right now that you can't see. So when we can invite that to come forth, like what is this here to teach me or gift me? What is this allowing me to do? Show me how this situation is for the best. This is just us being able to take our controlling perspective and our doubt energetically out of the situation. So it's like taking ourselves out and staying open. And I will say that when we do this, when we just like set that intention emotionally, a new door opens up or a new way of working or access to something different always presents itself. It's like a weird, it's a weird invitation to, to the universe. All right. Next tool is called life finds a way. Uh, this is just the reminder of the weed in the sidewalk. This is really how we have to be with all things professional, especially if whatever industry we're in is sought after or there's fierce competition or if it's arts-based. It's like we really have to be relentless. That's like the the mentality we have to have is just continue to grow. How can I continue to put energy into growth? That's the only thing if you don't know what else to do channel your energy into growth. I'm growing in any new direction. I, I have to continue to head in the direction of up towards the sun. That's all. Next tool, I am a person who bakes. I think one way to build up that feeling of efficacy and renew your sense of self is to make something out of nothing and share that thing with others. And if you are not a person who likes baking, fill in the blank with something else. I'm a person who grows. I am a person who creates. An easy one I wanted to throw out there is if you have no idea what to do with your day and you feel like really stuck and like energetically stifled, make some banana bread. Bake a, it's very easy. A lot of people like it. Um, if you're, if you want to challenge yourself, maybe bake some sourdough, but banana bread, I'll put a little uh, recipe in the show notes here, but it's so easy to do. And if you can make some banana bread and share that banana bread, it makes, it reminds you of like the type of person you are. And you're like, I'm a person with passion and energy and who other people want to be connected to. Um, I remember in college, I had, it was really hard to get into the college I got into. It, it was an arts college. And I remember the reason, part of the reason I got in is because I spent a really long time with my grandma sewing the cover of my portfolio. And it is one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. It is so gaudy. I mean, I still have it because it was like such a passion project and I didn't know how to sew. My grandma, bless her heart, she was like, oh, <laughs> she saw this fabric, so hideous. But I remember thinking like, this is so cool. Like this is the edgiest, most amazing fabric. It's like kind of punk rock. It was like a velvet with like scratches in it, like green, teal with like black. It was I don't know. And I bedazzled my initials onto it. And it was like mounted over foam core. It was really shoddy, everything. But the chair of my department at my school just, he said, I saw your passion and your energy. Like that trait of your personality is what I wanted to have in this department. It was like, oh, this person really gives a shit. And this person has so much excitement for this. And now that I'm a working professional and I like hire people, I'm like, I can see that too. I can see the value of that. So all of that is to say, bring up some of that passion, energy, love to the surface of your being. And that in turn allows others to see you as somebody they want in their lives. It doesn't always have to be about a resume or a thing on the resume. Sometimes it's about like seeing the spirit come through. So bake some banana bread, share the banana bread, or spend a long time making a cover of a portfolio. That's that tool. All right. Next tool, you in third person. Uh, this is for anybody who feels like they've been hitting a wall in like a job search perhaps, or in like a spouse search, I don't know, whatever it is in your energy that's currently feeling like, oh, I'm not getting anywhere. If you are burned out in a certain area and you've been trying for a really long time, another, I think, effective way to reset is to have a very close friend rewrite your external persona based on knowing you. 
And that can mean your friend is rewriting your resume, is redoing your um, cover letter, maybe your dating profile. I know that sounds weird, but it sometimes they can see us better than we can see ourselves. And the things that we're choosing to focus on about ourselves are not as important as we think they are. Or we have some sort of like embedded compensation that we can't even see that we're doing. So as an experiment, I strongly encourage you to have friends create these things for you or do a draft for you and just see, try and see what they're, what they see that you're not seeing. And know that like a lot of the time what we see as positive or attractive is not necessarily objectively positive or attractive. So it's a good exercise regardless. All right. Next tool, new you iconography. So right now, really what, if we're in a rut and we're feeling stagnant, what we're trying to do is change our emotional relationship to ourselves. And I think we need to do that by creating some sort of awareness of newness, like a new f identity. And I think a really nice way to do that or initiate that is bring something new and of value into your life. What could that be? It could be something so simple like new nail polish, a shade that is like symbolizes something that feels cool and edgy that's not necessarily you, but could be, or a new pair of sneakers. I think that's a really good one. Yes, I'm kind of encouraging you to shop in this tool, but I think it's like what we're going for is something that feels like a cooler version of you that's got some mystique built into it. And that is just this weird costume. It's like a superhero costume in that it allows you to tune your energy into that person as an extension of yourself and kind of like act as them. So it doesn't have to be anything extravagant. Like I'm not saying like, go buy that new Louis Vuitton bag or something. It, it's just something simple, but that feels like a little pivot on who you are. Next tool, make something out of nothing. I already touched on this, but I do think if you are a person in a creative industry, especially what will make you better is that your perception of yourself in your actions tells you you are better. And I think one thing that is incredibly therapeutic is making something creative with your body, with your energy, with your focus, that is a reflection of who you are as an artist, as a person, just for you. And it tells you, oh, I'm a person who has projects, who has passions, just in watching your own body do it. And the most important thing is that you put time into this thing, whatever it is. So I would encourage you strongly to create something like that is just an expression of yourself. Like maybe that's a blog post. I know when I first started my blog, I was like, oh, who the fuck is going to read this thing? This feels so pathetic. I remember like being like, what am I crazy? starting a blog on, I think it was on WordPress or something like that. This is decades ago, but that's what became this podcast. It's like started us just posting into the wind. If you don't want to do something like a blog, fine. I would say write something that is purely a product of you and your wisdom and something you care about, something that is a reflection of a, a hobby, a passion, an interest you have. A well-crafted post on social media is plenty. Alternately, if you are a person who has an existing project, I would reach out to a collaborator to get their input on that project. It makes that thing feel bigger and more official. I think if you're working on something with somebody else or they are caring about something that you are the originator of. So all of these are just like ways to energize a feeling that you have things that are being brought into the world by you. And they always evolve into other opportunities, always. It's like the more energy we put into something, the more little feelers sprout off of it. So it's not all for just this performative exercise. There will be things that actualize because of it. Okay. Next tool is an energy tune. And I think if you work out, 
awesome. Probably don't need this tool. I want you to, the goal here is really to get into that muscle memory of optimism and a, and a true memory that anything is possible. We've all known that at some point in our lives. We've all witnessed it at some point in our lives when we see that like the universe can conspire in your direction with like a vast amount of change instantly in any direction. That is always possible. That is always potential. Never forget that. As a way to physically feel that truth, I think one thing that's really helpful is to go into a place that reminds you of that in your in your actual physical energy level, but also in like a literal sense. So maybe that means you're going to a museum. Maybe you're going on a walk somewhere new that you've not visited before. Maybe you are uh, going to a space that feels wide open, mystical. I don't know, like a you're putting yourself in a zone that does not feel like your familiar routine, whatever that means to you. And I also encourage you to have a some sort of thing on your calendar where you are inviting in any kind of cross section in your life to occur. So if you are having a lunch with a friend, having some sort of conversation that is about something bigger, something potential, telling the story of things you are planning to do, presenting yourself with conviction and joy in all of the, the hobbies that you currently have. I think you think I can think of it as like you're throwing ropes up a mountainside and sometimes they catch on things and we can start to put some weight on them. When we're in a stage of trying to go somewhere new, I think it's helpful to just like continue to throw those ropes in new directions. I want it, I've always wanted to do blank. I've been working on this idea of doing blank. I want it. I'm, it's like we're telling these potential stories and we're seeing if any of them get traction. So we almost like, I think of it as like you are crafting, uh, you're practicing for like a, a magazine interview. What is the coolest way to explain the story of the things you are currently working on, thinking about, trying to bring into your life? And remember, everything is spin. Everything is PR. And what most people care about is how they look via association and what they can get out of something. So just keep that in mind. Any lunch meeting you're having with somebody, any conversation about yourself should be growing you, making your scale bigger, making you uh, more interesting, more attractive. And anything that we share outwardly, same rules apply. So I'm talking like social posts, all that stuff. All right, next tool, make the world bigger. I think one thing that really created who I am as a person was all the moments in my life, in my especially in my teenage years, when I was forced to do things that I really didn't want to do that were super boring, but that were like totally outside of my sphere uh, or, or like what was familiar to me culturally. So things like going to museum shows, going to really like unique restaurants, all of that stuff. I was like, oh, I don't want to be dumb. But later on, it fed my advantages in like, especially in creative fields, it's like to have those references to draw upon, it just made the world bigger. So I think when you are feeling stagnant and you're feeling small, if we can expand our experience of the world in all directions, all it does is give you more material to, to jump from in any direction. So it's like, and it'll come up as like something you can leverage, whether that's in an interview in a conversation or in like a reference you're going to make in your own work. It, it always makes you bigger to expand your frame of reference. So maybe that means it's like as simple as like watching a film that you've never seen that you've heard of that's known to be great. It, it could be anything. All right. Next tool is called swing big. So one of the things, I know this sounds weird, but like one of the things that energized me the most in recent years was when I applied to be a South by Southwest speaker because it was so fucking terrifying to me. I was like, I, I genuinely in my energy was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And to put myself in that arena, like put my hat in the ring for that venue 
was so terrifying. And it was like me very much just like pushing myself to be somewhere that I wasn't, but it gave me this like burst of energy and feeling of, uh, efficacy. So I wanted to invite you to try the same thing, just to, to visit the potential of a thing that could via this move now cross your path because you have reached out for it. It's like enlivening. So reach out to someone, like write someone a letter that it's something that terrifies you apply to something grand. And what we're looking for here is that energy of your heart starting to beat faster where you're like, Oh my fucking God, I can't believe I just did that. Like that, that's the kind of cool feeling of like your own power. All right. Next tool, be validated by someone of clout. Uh, I know this is like, it's like be successful. <laughs> like, yeah, I would like to have that. Um, okay. How do I do that? I know it's like a, an a oversimplification of something that most people would want, but if there's anybody in your life that you know as a, a person who is successful, who is respected, who is important in some sphere of their life, I think it's it feels grounding and it gives us a new sense of our orientation to our own personality as a successful person, if we can connect to that person and be validated by their contact. So the goal of this tool is to just connect to someone with clout, with no agenda, like purely as a way to remind yourself of your own intellect, your own value, your own connection to others in this world. And the fact that this other person has reciprocated or appreciated their connection to you is just like a nice energetic reminder of self. So this could be something like, you know, I like to send friends thank you texts for things that they have done in my life or like things that they brought into my, li my life. I also like to share books that I like with other people. And my connection to that content is something that increases my value via me sharing it. So that sounds weird, but like, for example, the Rick Rubin book that I'm obsessed with, The Creative Act, I sent that book to like four friends because I'm like, this book is so important and amazing. And then in also in that act, I am growing my definition of self. Like that wasn't the agenda at the moment, but like, that's an example of something where it's like, that's what I represent in that person's life. That is like my energy as a person in in an external form in the world. So I don't know. I'm, I'm basically telling you connect to somebody that you have a lot of respect for and have an exchange with them that reminds you of your true bigger value in this world outside of the rat race and commerce and popularity and all that shit. Okay, cool. Next tool, feel affected by the elements. If you live in a place that has lots of weather right now, I live in California, so this might be a tool that you're like, thanks, fuck you. <laughs> I think it's very satisfying to be affected by weather. It's like you feel like something has been accomplished. If you get to do that every day, ignore this tool. But if you don't, if you're like me and you're in like sunny weather all the time, if you go outside and feel cold or experience like wind or it's just like you, you feel like... I did something today. You come back feeling like a bigger person. It's just a little helpful tip if you want to add that into your day. All right, next tool, act as if. I know this is like a, one of the old, you know, everybody know, knows it kind of tools, but I just wanted to remind you of the truth behind this practice. Um, I've worked with newscasters. Apologies if you're a newscaster. I'm not trying to throw shade. I've worked with newscasters outside of their job of being newscasters, and they still talk like that. And that's because they are acting as if all the time. And after it's, after years, you become the thing you are acting as. And so I'm talking like, they talk like this, even outside of work. Same thing goes for, I worked with somebody who did um, kids doll advertising. It's actually Barbie advertising, I believe. And she talked like this because she'd been doing it for so long. So everything she said was like a Barbie commercial. So 
That is the power behind acting as if. The more you can act like a person who is successful, attractive, powerful, confident, has their shit going on, the more that actually imbues your muscles and your brain with that sense of self. You become that quite literally. So act as the person you choose to become. And the next tool is called play. I know this is also kind of a no duh thing, but if you have the opportunity in your day to do something you did as a kid, this gives you an intense feeling of satisfaction. It feels like, oh, I'm a human. I have a fruitful, amazing life. I'm talking playing on a jungle gym, uh, scootering on a scooter, playing basketball, whatever feels right for you. This is just another ingredient to give you a feeling of accomplishment at the end of your day. If you are feeling closed off, powerless, ineffective, um, all of these ways of uplifting your brain and your psyche are, it's like adding a little tiny ingredient, a little dash of meds to your brain. So they all, they all add up at the end. And at the end of the day, the more we can bring stuff like this into our lives, it just makes us more rational and less blinded by the feeling of hopelessness. All right, next tool. This is easier said than done, but do a signal cleanse. And by that, I mean like have no reception. It. I think that the worst part of phones is not necessarily the actual machine itself. I think it's the connection to all of the expectations of timeliness from all of the other people in the world, but also the knowledge that all of these, these things are happening that we need to be aware of. It's so, it fractures focus so much. So if you haven't done it recently, get off the grid, just cut off reception for at least 24 hours and just see how that affects your baseline for serenity, calmness, just a, a very pure sense of presence. It's so cool. It's like, uh, as soon as you get out of that for like 24 hours, the next day you're like, ah, I remember this feeling. I had this feeling all the time when I was little. And now I am constantly, my brain's asking, what, what do I need to check? We're asking that all the time. What do I need to check? All right. Next tool, get the shape of it. You've probably already done this if you're in this situation, but I think one thing that's really helpful is to tell someone else about your whole situation and see it from all sides. Because in our retelling of our situation, we get outside of our hyper-focused frontal perspective of it. We also get to hear ourselves say new things about our process and when, especially when you feel small and helpless, we tend to build like a massive dark portrait of a world and a future that is like so limited, so constricted, and contains nothing but rejection and helplessness. It's like every path leads to a dead end. We can get outside of that if we tell somebody else and start to process, these are the things I've been trying. These are the things that are not working. These are the things I'm considering. It's like you start to grow outside of that perspective and you start to hear yourself go down new leads in your own mind that you haven't validated yet when you're it's just you solo. I also want to encourage you, if you have had a negative experience recently with somebody professionally or somebody creatively, don't forget to process that and talk about it, especially if it hurt a lot. Like if somebody shut you down, somebody criticized you, told you you're talentless, told you whatever, it's really important if if you are a creative person, especially if, you're, if your product is yourself, it's really important to talk about that and externalize it because it can grow into like such dense scar tissue and it, it grows over to the point where you can't even see it anymore to the point where you could maybe not want to do something anymore that you love or that is, is important to you. And like you grow past it and you think like, why did I stop trying? Why did I stop doing that? Oh, because that, that, that one thing was so damaging. That one thing hurt so bad, but you basically have to bring it outside of your psyche. So it doesn't own you or affect your path or, 
steer your path unbeknownst to you. And then this is my last tool. It's a, I'm really just encouraging you to use access to all the things that could possibly help you and to think differently about your situation. I want you to be ruthless. So the tool is, how can I create my PR in your situation in particular? How can you give your story a new spin and how can you take advantage of the access that your life has given you? If we have the cards, we have to use those cards, especially if you are feeling like you're trapped by your circumstances. So I'm just throwing these out as possible ways to get you thinking about how you can insert yourself into the sidelines of people who can affect your situation. So much happens, so much that happens in the world is the result of PR and nepotism. I'm just really trying to get you to think about all of the access that you possibly have and how you can use it. How can you create spin in your life? How can you rewrite the story of your situation to be the coolest most advantageous one, knowing that everybody is ego-based. Everybody is looking out for themselves and how they look and what s somebody else is bringing into their self-definition. So how can you use that story to your advantage about you? How can you rewrite it? What's that PR headline about you that you can share outward, you know, outwardly? I just think it's like a helpful way to like rethink a problem. So before I close, I want to thank my latest sponsors, Lorna, thank you so very much for your donation, and Emily, thank you so much for your donation. Anyone who has the means, donations really help out this show. And if you don't have the means, if you could share it with somebody who it could help, that would be amazing as well. You can head to yaywithme.com for uh, my tools, my services, and then also to donate. And um, in closing, we can only see so much, always. And the only thing that matters are actions. So take actions despite how you feel and know that success and innovation is the result of just never stopping. It's of being relentless. It's not related to talent. It's not related to originality. It's that never stopping. It's like you just don't give up. That's it. All the times you wanted to give up and you kept going anyway, that is what results in all that is effective in your life. So if you ever wonder why there are so many mediocre everythings out there, movies, books, products, I know this is like so negative to say, but like that is because somebody didn't stop pursuing a goal. That's all that matters. Drive and tenacity and nepotism and PR. <laughs> So just never underestimate the importance of that. I'm not condoning, to be clear, nepotism, but I think, think about what you have access to. Think about all of your cards. And it, this is just a way to reinvent the problem that we've been facing or um, stagnation. And remember that all, everything will have dips, plateaus, bumps in the road. That's just part of it. So don't be fooled by investing in them too much conceptually. It's just like, yeah, that's a part of the process of all things that eventually become success. That is just part of it. This is all part of like the vine breaking through the rocky dirt or the weed breaking through the sidewalk. So I hope this is helpful and I send you my love and don't forget to smile. <laughs>